Hi gang, Scott here. In this video, we'll continue our march through the on one effects filters and we're at the tone enhancer. The tone enhancer is really a, a classic filter. It's been in on one products for a long time. I'll cover all the sliders here, but this will be brief. I'll be referring to other filters, other tools that are in on one because they do the same thing as tone enhancer. And in many cases, they do it either better or with a little more control. And I'll explain as we go through the sliders. But really quick, if you are looking at on one products, thinking about adding the plugins to your workflow or on one photo raw, check the show notes. There is an offer code down there. It will save you money, it won't cost you anything extra. It gives me a little support to do more videos like this. So tone enhancer, let's take a look at this thing. Let's get the Tone Enhancer added to the filter stack here, Tone Enhancer. And it's a reasonably compact tool. I will expand the entire thing. So this is everything we have. We have a tone section, we have a little bit for compression, we have detail, and then we have curves. And so you can kind of see the, the history of some of the on one tools and filters stemming from the Tone Enhancer. So uh, let's cover the various sections here. But really in the tone part, if you are an On One Photo Raw user, you know, this is the kind of stuff that you're doing in the develop module. If you're using On One Effects as a plugin, like I am right here right now, a lot of these things you'll have done in your main raw editor. So while the sliders here do what you expect they would do, right? Exposure raises and lowers exposure. Contrast increases and decreases. Contrast highlights. We have shadows to deepen or not. We can change the white point, the black point, all that stuff we can do here. But in practice, not really using the Tone Enhancer to do these things anymore. It's just done in other filters or in your base raw processing. Now compression, that's an interesting one. This is like the precursor to HDR look. I've done a different video about HDR look, but compression now squeezes the histogram and gives you like a, a flatter look, trying to recover if you had blown highlights or shadows. Notice in the lower left corner as I push compression, you can kind of see that rock face getting very flat. Uh, if I really go really far, you can see the whole photo gets very flat. Uh, that was for you know our high dynamic range situations before on one had HDR look or on one HDR, you know, the HDR merging. We had compression, we had some games we could play with. Using this slider much anymore? No, I'd be doing things with HDR look in terms of a filter workflow and on one effects workflow or a proper HDR blend. Next we have detail and clarity. Now these were kind of the bread and butter of Tone Enhancer back in the day. Right, we can increase detail. And detail as a slider, it kind of works like the medium slider in dynamic contrast. You know, dynamic contrast is the newer kid on the block, not exactly new anymore, but that's where you want to do your contrast control because you have more control. But uh, this one, you know, it kind of works like the medium slider and increasing crispness in medium sized things. Like I, you know, I can make it soft. If I push this, you can notice it really much in the surf right there in the center. That's getting very crisp. Clarity does something similar. It's a little more aggressive. It's more, it's more about uh, contrast overall. This simulates, uh, it's similar to what Lightroom had in the clarity uh, slider, it still has, but uh, this is what it was doing back in the day. You know, clarity is a little more punchy, a little more, uh, detail than the detail slider. Detail as a slider is uh, more tame. It's uh, a little more measured of an approach where clarity really, really pushes those, those micro contrast at the edges. So occasionally I might come in and use detail here if for whatever reason dynamic contrast isn't giving me what I want, because these sliders, they use a slightly different algorithm. They do give a slightly different look. You'll find that a lot of the presets in On One, some that have been in the product for a long time, Tone Enhancer shows up. And you know, one of the things is to get this, uh, these detail, these clarity sliders, adding that little bit of punch to our photos. And the last bit of Tone Enhancer is curves control. Before there was the curves filter, right? We have a, a dedicated curves filter. Before that existed, we had curves in the Tone Enhancer. I've got a completely separate video about how curves work in On One. The curves controls in Tone Enhancer work exactly the same way 
uh, and it's really a matter of preference at this point. I'll use the curves to do my work, the dedicated curves filter, because I have dedicated masking in that point. I mean, yes, I could add multiple tone enhancers and do like some sort of curves thing with one tone enhancer, and then, I don't know, some detail with a separate tone enhancer, like in this case, let's push that detail up. And I kind of like what it was doing on the surf, making that punch, but uh, suppose I want to mask that and say, you know what, let's uh, do a luminosity mask, so I'm downplaying that in the shadows and in the mid-tones, maybe feather that out a little bit, uh, you know, take the the density down some. So I'm getting some punch there before and after, but in a measured way. But then if I wanted to do some sort of curves thing, like ah, I want to add, you know, a, a little more of a twilight feel, you know, pop the red up, bring the green down a little bit, increase the blue a little bit. Well, this curve is now subject to this mask and I just as soon use curves separately whether I want to use it globally or not and then if I want tone enhancer I want to do something with detail I can have a separate mask for that uh, so let me reset this close this down actually reset that mask let's get everything back to normal but to, to sum it up Tone Enhancer is like the granddaddy filter and it's broken out into numerous places now that the On One products have uh, evolved. If you're using On One Photo Raw, Tone, that's really your develop module. Compression, HDR look or the HDR merge proper. Detail has become dynamic contrast and curves has become curves. So. Do you ever need to use the Tone Enhancer filter? You certainly can. The point where I'll consider using it is really with the detail section because it does deliver a different style of detail than dynamic contrast. Everything else, other utilities, other tools, other sliders and filters that we have in the product, those do the same thing and they're separate so you have more nuanced control when you get into masking. I hope you found the video useful. If you've got any other questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.